In this video, we'll show you how to organize the content of your Scalar book into paths for your readers. Paths are very flexible and can be quite complex. This introduction will demonstrate the basics of creating a path. We'll also learn how to create a table of contents and understand the basics of tags as a nonlinear method of navigating content in a Scalar book. Paths are the way that you are going to give your, your audience a roadmap through your content. This is where you're gonna exercise your organization. There are two types of organizational tools in Scalar. And I'll just say that the first one, which there was a question about earlier, was about tags. I'm just gonna talk about that really quickly, and then we're gonna go into paths. So tags offer non-linear access to your content. And you can't really do much with tags until you have a lot of content. So it's really dependent upon having content. So this is a page that is a tag. And I have tagged all of the images that we have in the site here that are in color. So I have brought in a way for people to go to content without being marched through in a specific order, without dictating an order. You can go anywhere you want and look at the media that I've organized by a keyword or a concept, a theme. These are the colorful prints. So tagging you would use in the same way you would use tags in any other application. Um, you're trying to link content by some concept or theme. And then what Scalar allows you to do with those tags is also to visualize them. And that's another one of the really cool features of Scalar is this visualization, which it does for you based on whatever you say you have tagged in a particular way. So you can experiment with tagging your media um, and seeing how that you know, affects your, your navigation, right? So that is one way to sort of organize content is by tags. But the, the predominant way that you're gonna be organizing your content is through paths that will help people figure out where to go and how to get there, okay? And so a path is a page that you are giving directions to. So I'm gonna choose a page I created earlier which is of all kinds. All right, and I am going to edit this page and I am going to make it a path. So this page, regardless of what the layout is, this is going to be a path. And so when I choose path, it's gonna say, choose the items that this path contains. And so I'm gonna come through and I'm going to pick the images or the pages, whatever I want the path to be, and click on the checkboxes so that I'm selecting them, and then I'm gonna add them. So now this page is a path, and these are all pages in the path, okay? I'm gonna save and view. So I don't have any content on this page. A path can have content or not. It's completely up to you. Um, if you want your, your section headings to be paths with images, you can do that. But this is basically showing people this is where you're gonna go. And it always numbers the path parts and it always says contents. And it starts with the first thing in the path. And then it's take me to the next thing in the path. And again, to the next thing in the path, okay. And now it's taking me to the annotation because we're on that page. So the first thing you have to do in your book is determine how you're gonna get your readers started, right? This is the first most important path you're gonna create is from your home page. This needs to be a path that takes your reader somewhere. And you can either start with an introduction, 
or you can go to a table of contents. In this case, I'm going to start with an introduction. So I have a page called introduction. I'm going to save and view. And so now my home page is now a path that tells the reader to begin with the introduction. Okay, does that make sense? So I, I, I gave them somewhere to go. Right. So every scalar book comes with a built-in table of contents. It's always in the upper left-hand corner. It always has a home page, and it always has an index, which it builds automatically. You get to decide what goes into the table of contents. You are in charge of what goes in here. So I'm going to go back to my dashboard. And this time, instead of working in the content area under properties for the book, you'll see that there is a table of contents section and you can add items here. And you can literally put anything you want into the table of contents. So I'm going to put in my introduction and I'm going to put in the path that I started and I'll just add those and I'll just add another page or two. Just to add. So now I can see on the properties tab, my table of contents area has items and I can change the order of these um, by dragging and dropping into whatever order I want. And I can add additional items here if, if I want to. So now if I save and return to book, when I come to the, the menu, my table of contents now has those things that I said had to be in it. Okay. Does that make sense? So my introduction doesn't go anywhere at the moment. So I would have to decide what is the path following the introduction. So you have options for creating your paths. You can have one continuous path that starts with the home page and goes all the way through the book in order. I think it makes a lot of sense to do nested paths where you have sections or chapters or groupings of content that you want to give people access to um, and that will allow you to create other paths that are not necessarily linear, marching from one page to the next to the next. So if you have multiple paths, you can give people branches to follow, to go off on it on a tangent or to explore another concept or theme, okay? So if I go back to my dashboard, so now under content, I have paths as well as pages and media and tags. So I can see what all of my paths are and then I can edit my paths from here. And a path can contain pages or it can contain images, media, whatever you want the path to, to, to have in it. You can, you can put those things together. Um, so let me go to let's go here. So if I look at this page, it's now showing me that it is in a relationship. And it's in a path relationship. And it is contained by a path, but I can also make it a path and say I want it now to go from the introduction to my first chapter my witches. So now this page has two relationships. It is a path and it is contained in a path. And then notice here that you can change a destination of a path if you want to, but you have to have paths and other options to go to. So some of these things you can't fully explore until you have more content to work with. Um, so now if I go home, I start with the introduction. 
I've read the introduction and it's saying here, start now with witches of all kinds. And so then it takes me to a page. And then I have to decide after they get through with signature, where do I want them to go? Right, so if you're worried that your readers won't go back to the table of contents, you can create a page that is a recreation of your table of contents. So I'm creating a new page and the layout of this page is table of contents. So title, everything has to have a title. So now I have a page that represents the full table of contents. And if I wanted to, I could insert this at the end of the path for every chapter if I wanted to, so that people knew they could go back to the table of contents or they could just go back if they wanted to. So you have a lot of choices when you're creating paths. Um, I, I know that Scalar recommends fewer than 100 items in a path. So I think if you have a lot of content, nesting, subpaths will make a lot of sense. 